The ultimate goal with these worksheets is to have the left sides fully filled out, giving you a roadmap for cutting all of the materials needed to create this slipcase. Since you're watching this video, you've probably already downloaded the worksheets, but just in case you haven't, here are the directions for downloading those. Go to handmadebooksandjournals.com, Make Custom Books, Boxes and Slipcases, Classic Slipcase, Slipcase Worksheets. Here you'll see two images of the worksheets. Click on the first one. This will take you to another page where you can download it. Depending on the OS and the browser you're using, the next step may vary. I'm on a Mac using Safari, so I control click on the image and choose Save Image to Downloads or Save Image As if I want to download it to my desktop. These measurements are based on book board that is 0 0.067 inches thick, or about 3 seconds of an inch, or 2 millimeters. Start with worksheet number one, the book board and inside lining paper. The first thing you need to do is take the measurements of the book that you're going to put in the slipcase. These measurements need to be as accurate as possible for the finished slipcase to be successful. You'll want a ruler that measures sixteenths of an inch at least. If any of the edges are slightly rounded, like the spine of this portfolio, Measure using a thin piece of bookboard against the edge. Measure up to the edge of that piece of bookboard. This will give you a more accurate measurement. You can also use that piece of bookboard to get an accurate measurement of the depth of the book. Just make a mark where the book hits the piece of bookboard and then measure that mark. So once you have these three important measurements, fill in the width, length, and depth blanks on your worksheet. These are the numbers that everything else will be based off of. Now just start working your way down the worksheet. Any place you see an A, B, or C you can fill in because now you know those values. The first formula has you add 1 8 of an inch to your width or A value, which in my case is 8 and 1 8. So you end up with 8 and 2 8. You can leave the figure just like this or reduce the fraction to 1 4 if you remember how to do that. So now you know the value for D and you can fill that in wherever you see it on the worksheets. Continue in this manner with the rest of the formulas on this page. You will occasionally run into situations where the fractions you need to add don't match, so you'll need to convert those first. For those of you who don't remember your fractional math, here's a quick refresher. In this example, you need to add 1 8 and 1 4, which you can't do until you get a common denominator, the lower part of the fraction. The easiest way to do this is to multiply them by each other which would result in 30 seconds, but that isn't always the best way. A better way is to just find the lowest common denominator. With the sort of fractions you'll be dealing with, this should be pretty easy. For instance, in this case, it's pretty easy to turn fourths into eighths by just multiplying the top and bottom by two. This turns one fourth into two eighths, and now you can add them together. Once you have the same denominator, you can just add the numerators, the top part of the fraction, to get your answer. Now that you have the answer, just fill in that value any place you see the appropriate letter. Work your way through the rest of the sheet in the same manner. By the way, the math for the second part of this first sheet, the liner pieces for the inside of the slipcase, is very simple. You're just adding one to each of the requested figures, and these measurements don't even have to be very precise, because you will be trimming these pieces later. Fill out the second worksheet in exactly the same way. Many of the figures that you'll need for this will come from the first worksheet. Once you've worked your way through both worksheets, you're ready to cut your materials. By the way, I will often complete these worksheets twice just to double check my math. It's easier to take a little extra time at this step rather than discover, after you've cut and glued things together, that something doesn't fit right. 